I'm not even sure like how to start or where to start with this video. So we're just going to dive right in. All of your juiciest questions answered. Here we go. Okay, so about a year ago, I started posting weight loss content here on YouTube and over on Instagram. My goal was to lose 75 pounds. Basically, I was just doing a calorie deficit. Some people thought I wasn't in a big enough deficit. Really, anytime you share stuff about weight loss and what you eat on social media, people are going to have opinions on it, which, which is totally fine, right? <laughs> I knew that going in. Part of the reason why I wanted to kind of share this journey. I hate calling it a journey, but whatever. Why I wanted to share is because I feel like it's something that a lot of women, especially uh, people in general, but like women, especially because that's mostly who watches my channel can relate to is like struggling with your weight. Most of your um, adult life, which is what I have had issues with. And then part of it also was just, I kind of thought that if I um, was sharing on social media that it would help with like accountability, right? So like if I knew that I was going to be sharing weight loss updates and what I eat in a day and things like that, that it would help me stay on track um, because there's sort of like, a, you know, an accountability uh, component there, which it did for a while. Um, the last update I shared was about three months ago. I had switched over to low carb and I did that for about three or four weeks before I finally like, I, <laughs> I don't want to say I just said screw it, but I kind of just did say screw it. Um, I jumped off the wagon, dove off the wagon really. Uh, did I light the wagon on fire? I mean, not really, but kind of. So in the first like eight or nine months that I was sharing my weight loss efforts and, and results, I lost 20 pounds, okay? 20 pounds in nine months for someone like me who I feel like weighs a lot and should be able to lose weight more quickly than that was very, fr was very frustrating. And I think that I started to resent the fact that I was kind of sharing my progress on social media because I feel like it just made me think way too much about everything. It made me think about my weight too much. It made me think about what I was eating and was it healthy enough and you know, weighing everything and, and measuring everything that I was eating. And it, it gets to a point where you're just ex like, it's mentally exhausting. I don't really know any other way to put it. And like, it's something that if you have struggled with your weight throughout your adult life, it is exhausting. Like it's exhausting to have to think about your weight and what you eat every single day, every single hour of every single day. Like, I know that not everyone deals with this, right? Because I'm sure there are people who like, just like eat normally and go about their life and never think about their weight. I don't know, I don't know those people, but maybe there are, there's, <laughs> maybe there are people out there like that. I don't know what that's like. And I just got to the point where I was so frustrated at my, what I considered like to be like really slow progress. Um, and then I just started to resent the fact that I was, you know, tracking and, and weighing and measuring and, and weighing myself and not seeing the results that I thought I should be seeing, you know, so, so on and so forth. And so what happens when we get frustrated, we self-sabotage, right? And so that's what I did. And so I'm here today to give you an update on everything that has transpired and then what I plan to do about it in the future. Okay. So I lost a total of 20 pounds in, we'll say nine months, because I can't remember exactly, 20 pounds in nine months, okay? In the next four months, I did gain 15 of that back. So I did not gain all of the weight back, but I gained almost all of it back, all except for five pounds, okay? Am I proud of this and do I wanna share this? No, but, <laughs> but I think most of this, most of us have gone through this in our lives, right? At least I know I have. I had weight loss surgery, uh, you know, six, was it six? No, seven years ago now, seven and a half years ago now. Truly, I am a failed weight loss surgery case. Um, I've tried literally every single diet out there. Like, I, I've done it all. Like, all of y'all that have struggled with your weight, you know this, we, we've done it all. We've done all the diets, we've done all the things. And it's kind of like this one 
thing in my life that I feel like I am pretty successful in like all other areas of my life. And I feel like it's just this one part of my life that I cannot figure out. And it's, it's frustrating because I feel like people judge you for that, right? They judge you because they think that you have poor willpower, um, or they see that you're overweight and they automatically assume that you're lazy or that you eat super unhealthy all the time, or, you know, all of these assumptions that people have as humans and judgments that people have as humans and all of that. I just know that as I get older, like I turned 40 this year, I, I need to figure out some way to like make this sustainable for me and get this like extra weight off of my body. Like it's not that I necessarily want to be thin because I don't even really care about being thin so much. It's that I know that like as I age, like to this date, I really haven't had any complications from being overweight, um, like I don't have diabetes, I don't have sleep apnea, I don't have like joint problems, I don't have anything like that. But I just know like if I'm carrying this extra, you know, 75, actually technically I'm probably 100 pounds overweight, um, which is crazy to, <laughs> which, <laughs> which is crazy to think about losing 100 pounds. But you know, it's just, it's not good for us as we age, right? And I don't wanna be one of those people that has to end up having 15 million surgeries after I retire and um, you know, I can't really travel or enjoy my retirement because I have all of these health, health complications, right? All right, I also wanted to let you guys know that today's video is sponsored by Element and I've worked with them before here on my channel. I absolutely love their products. I drink at least one of these every day, sometimes two. Um, obviously, hydration is super important regardless of whether you're on a weight loss journey or not. But I really like using Element because it kind of breaks up the monotony of just drinking plain water. I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I just get tired <laughs> of drinking plain water. And Element also has electrolytes, right? So they have a ton of different flavors, but it has sodium, potassium, and magnesium. And you can mix it with as little or as much water as you would like. I like to mix mine with 32 ounces of water because I like the flavor of it more. Um, you can kind of play around with that and mix it in different amounts of water to get the strength that you prefer. Element is a zero sugar electrolyte drink mix born from the growing body of research revealing that optimal health outcomes occur at sodium levels that are two to three times government recommendations. So each stick pack delivers a meaningful dose of electrolytes free of sugar, artificial colors, or other dodgy ingredients. Element is really formulated for anyone who is on a mission to restore their health through hydration. It's suited for athletes, people who do intermittent fasting, or if you're on a keto, low carb, whole food, or paleo diet. Sometimes I get questions about which flavor I like the best. I would say for me, the raspberry one is probably my favorite, but I also really like the orange flavor as well. I also really just love the convenience of the packets because uh, when I travel for work, I can just throw these in my bag and then just mix them with a bottle of water when I'm on the plane. So I make sure to stay hydrated because traveling is obviously one of those things that can dehydrate you really fast. And just because it's winter time, that doesn't mean you still don't need to stay hydrated. Element Chocolate Medley is now available and each Chocolate Medley 30 count box includes 10 chocolate raspberry, 10 10 chocolate chai and 10 chocolate mint. These chocolate medley packs are available for a limited time only. So whether you want to try those or the regular flavored element packs, they also have unflavored as well. You can use my link in the description box below. And when you use my link, you guys are gonna get a free element sample pack. This offer is only available through my link. You won't be able to get this if you just order off the website. And the great thing about these sample packs is they include one of every flavor. So you can actually try out different flavors and decide which ones you like the best before purchasing a whole box. The sample pack offer is available for both new and returning customers. So make sure you take advantage of that. Once again, I'll have a link in the description box below, or you can also tap the screen right here and get your free element sample pack with any order. I truly, truly love this product and I use it pretty much almost every day of my entire life. So highly recommend you guys try it out if you're trying to get more benefits from your hydration with electrolytes as well. And obviously we love the taste. It's delicious. 
Okay, so what are we doing going forward um, with this back on track effort with weight loss? Okay, so here is my plan. I am not doing a low carb diet anymore. I am gonna stick to um, eating in a calorie deficit with a focus on protein because that has really been what's worked for me in the past and what I personally feel is most sustainable. Um, I actually had a consultation with a doctor to also talk about weight loss medications. So lots of people, well, lots of people are talking about Ozempic and Wigovi and semaglutide and all of that stuff right now. It's kind of interesting because even though I have been to doctor's offices within the last year, sort of like talking about weight loss and talking about my struggles, none of my doctors have ever offered injectable weight loss medications to me, which I think is kind of odd, honestly, with like how popular they are right now. One doctor, the bariatric sur surgeon, did offer me fentramine, um, which I'm not quite sure if I wanna take that because I'm pretty sure that it causes like rapid heart rate. It can also worsen anxiety, so I'm not quite sure about um, taking that. Obviously, no medication is without risks and, and side effects. And even if you are, you know, taking medication for weight loss, you still have to do the work yourself. Like, I hate when people say things like, oh, well, weight loss surgery is the easy way out, or Ozempic is the easy way out, or anything is like the easy way out. Like, I was talking to somebody about that the other day, and I'm like, do people say that when you take antidepressants? Do they say, oh, well, you're cheating your way out of depression with these antidepressants? <laughs> like, like, no, like I always just say, listen, better living through pharmaceuticals, right? If there is a drug that can help with something and the uh, benefits outweigh the risks or outweigh the side effects, then why not use it, right? And so anyway, I ended up seeking out basically like an online telehealth service that offers weight loss medications. And I can link the one that I am using down below. So far, I have only had a couple of appointments and I have yet to start the medication because they were trying to see if they could get it approved through my insurance. But I have been happy with um, the service so far. So like I said, I'll link that down below if you're interested. But basically, I had a consult um, a couple of weeks ago with a provider and I talked to her about, you know, my weight loss efforts, you know, what, what has helped me in the past, what has not helped me. And really the thing that I am just concerned about is like, not concerned about, but something I think about a lot is all of this like food noise that we have in our heads. And like some of you who have taken like GLP-1 medications, like let me know if you have found this too. But a lot of people who take these medications like Wigovi and Saxenda and Ozempic, they report that this kind of food noise that they had in their head all the time is just like gone or greatly diminished. And for me, that is something that I would honestly love, <laughs> love to experience. Um, and so I ended up uh, having this consult. She said, you know, I think you would be a good candidate to try one of these medications. Um, we need to get your labs done and we'll see if your insurance will cover it and then we'll have another uh, appointment. So I don't know what's going, Connor has friends over there probably destroying the house. So I went and got my labs drawn. Um, I probably wouldn't have had to get my labs drawn except I could not find in my most recent lab reports where they had done hemoglobin A1C, which I thought was like weird. Like I thought you were supposed to have that done like every year as an adult. But anyway, my hemoglobin A1C was 5.3, which is like, normal it is not like in the pre-diabetic range or anything like that and so they submitted to my insurance company and my insurance company will not pay for ozempic because i am not diabetic or pre-diabetic but they will pay for wigovi or saxenda so i have another consult um an appointment in a couple of weeks i think it's like the first week of january to get started on the medication. But in the meantime, I am still counting my calories. I am still using my fitness pal. I am still um, trying to eat, you know, protein forward foods and still stay at or around 2000 or less calories a day. What the provider suggested was that I do like a 10 to 15% um, calorie deficit based on my TDEE which is around 19,000 to 200 calories. Um, obviously they encourage exercise. Exercise is something that I have struggled with my whole entire life. I do not like it. 
I am not good at doing it consistently. I have never been good at exercising consistently for a long period of time. I don't know. Like I, I just, <laughs> I just, I'm a, I'm a failure when it comes to that. Like, and if you are like me and you have successfully figured out how to consistently exercise in your life, I would love to know what, what you're doing. I did get a walking pad. Um, which I need to start using again. I stopped using it when I had like really bad plantar fasciitis, but that has gone away. So fingers crossed that that doesn't come back. It makes walking difficult when you have plantar fasciitis. Probably I have plantar fasciitis because I'm fat too. I didn't even go to the doctor for that because I knew if I went to the doctor, they would be like, lose weight, just lose weight, just lose weight and all of your problems will be solved. You will have no more health ailments if you just lose weight. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm being a smart ass. The other reason why I need to lose weight and why I need to like get this under control and get my shit together is because, okay, several months ago, I don't know when it was. Anyway, I had my yearly mammogram, okay? I had a questionable spot in my mammogram that they had me come back for. I did an ultrasound. Then they wanted to do a biopsy because they weren't sure what was going on. So I went and had actually it was the week of Thanksgiving. I had this breast biopsy done. I would not recommend having a breast biopsy done and then trying to cook Thanksgiving dinner. Like that was not a good plan, but that was when the, the appointment was available. So that's what I did. Okay. They called me back and they said, um, the initial reports of the biopsy show benign, but there are, it needs further analysis. So we're sending it to the university, uh, lab, and then they're going to analyze it and we'll get back with you. That just came back last week. It took forever. And basically I do not have breast cancer. I do, however, have atypical cells, which is essentially precancerous, right? So I have precancerous cells in my right breast. Now, what do I do now? What do I do now? Because I have a family history of breast cancer. Um, here's what I did. I called my doctor back and I said, Hey, I need to, um, have you write me an order for the BRCA genetic testing that tells you if you are uh, a carrier for the gene that causes breast cancer and ovarian cancer. Well, I have both in my family. My mom had ovarian cancer and my grandma had breast cancer. So I checked with my insurance company. Will they pay for the test? Yes, they will because you have a first degree relative that had ovarian cancer. Okay. So I went and got the labs drawn. I still don't have the results back yet. I just had them done last week. Now I have an appointment with the University Cancer Center to see a breast surgeon, a surgeon who specializes in breast surgeries um, because she's like, I don't know, this is my ob -GYN. She's like, I don't know what they're gonna have you do. I don't know if they'll recommend you to have a lumpectomy and do um, radiation or whether they will uh, recommend another biopsy or a mastectomy or whatever. Um, but I'm at the point now where if my BRCA test comes back positive and I have these precancerous cells, it is almost certain that I will develop breast cancer. Um, and so I need to, um, just have a mastectomy <laughs> that, I mean, I've already told Adam that that's what I'm going to do. Um, that I will just do the preventative mastectomy and then I will get fake ones and they will probably be a lot smaller and perkier, um, than my current set. <laughs> So I will definitely keep you guys updated on that journey. Um, it has been kind of distracting and um, it's kind of why I missed a, almost a week of vlogmas because I don't know, it's just, it's, it's just frustrating to have to deal with. And then, you know, trying to navigate the healthcare system, even for someone like me who is familiar with healthcare is still frustrating um, even at best. So yeah, we'll see what happens. Obviously, if you are overweight, that also increases your risk, your risk of breast cancer, right? So that's another reason why I need to lose weight. There are uh, many risk factors for breast cancer and the big one that I cannot control obviously is genetics and family history. And so I feel like I have to be able, I feel like I need to control all of the other things I can control then, right? Like get my weight under control, um, smoking. I don't smoke. I used to smoke like from when I was like 16 until I was like 24, maybe I, I did smoke for like eight years, but I quit many years ago. I don't smoke. I don't drinking is another risk factor. I don't really drink habitually anyway. I mean, obviously I'll have 
a beer or a white claw here and there, but it's not like I'm drinking every single day. So I don't feel like that's a huge risk factor. So yeah, be, being overweight, I guess is, is really, is really a risk factor. So that, that gives me motivation as well to, um, get that under control. But yeah, I mean, um, I didn't know whether I wanted to kind of talk about the Ozempic and, and the weight loss injectables here on my channel, but um, I figured why not talk about it, right? Because it's not like I'm trying to like hide anything. Um, I have gotten comments, you know, saying how much fatter I am. So I'm sure you guys have noticed that I gained some weight back, <laughs> that I gained some weight back as well, because you know, fat people don't know that they're fat. They have to usually be told that they're fat. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm being a smart ass again. Um, okay. So yeah. So basically that was my update. I don't know. I should have written a script for this or something. Cause I feel like I was just kind of all over the, all over the place, but going forward, we're sticking to the calorie deficit. We're going to be in a 10 to 15% deficit. Slow weight loss is good. Even though it makes me want to gouge my eyeballs out. I'm going back to the doctor. Hopefully going to get put on Wigovi. I think Wigovi is the one that I got approved for. We'll go be in sex Sunday. I'm, I am somehow, some way going to start loving to exercise. <laughs> somehow, somehow, some way I'm going to start learning how to love exercise. Um, and yeah, let's just get our together in 2024. Shall we? I thought it was going to happen in 2023 and it didn't. What happened? <laughs> we lit the, we jumped off the wagon and lit it on fire. Gosh, dang it. Okay. Well, anyway, um, I hope that if you guys want a free, uh, sample pack of element that you go down and click my link in the description box below, because you will get this free sample pack with any order for new and returning customers. So definitely take advantage of that. And, uh, yeah, subscribe, subscribe for more hot mess, weight loss and other related content. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to stop now. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.